Now, this little tip I'm going to show you is about how to create your own data type names in C++. And I'm going to be honest, it's not something that's used very often, but it does have a couple of practical uses. For example, let's say you were coming from another language and you're very familiar and used to typing out a particular data type name. Well, you might keep on being thrown by this inside of C++. And so C++ will let you redefine a data type name. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a keyword type def. Then we're going to specify our old data type name and then our new one. And so what we've done is we've created a new data type name. Now, int will still work, and you can see here, I'm not getting an error, but I can type in int integer, and it will also work. Notice no errors whatsoever because we've defined our type name. So if we're coming from another language, this might be beneficial, or I may want to do it instead of having to do something like typing in a star for a pointer name. So, for example, I'm going to say type def int star, which takes a little bit extra write because I have to hold a shift key and, you know, kind of move my hands. I might call it int p because it's an integer pointer. And so it just becomes a little bit easier to type. Now, this can make C++ a little bit more confusing, especially if you're working on a large project. So if you're working on a large project with other people, make sure that you talk to them and have a standard device so that it's easy to work with one another and know what types of data you're working with. Because no one wants to have to be scrolling around looking for these if they don't have to. So consider it's a neat little trick that you can use in C++, but you might want to be careful about it because you don't want to cause any issues, especially if you're working on a project with other people.